So, good evening. I welcome for this uh, session, tips and tricks session. So, the first presentation will be LAD Hostial Legion by Dr. Vikas Majumdar. Dr. Majumdar, please. Good afternoon, chairpersons. Good afternoon, colleagues. Today, I am going to discuss about the tips and tricks of LAD Osteal stenosis. Let's start with a case. He's a 52-year-old gentleman who had a history of anterior wall myocardial infarction four weeks ago, for which he had a primary angioplasty to the mid-LAD. He had residual osteoproximal LAD disease and the diagonal disease. He's non-diabetic and non-hypertensive. And this is the angiography. You can see, now I've treated the diagonal with a drug eluting balloon, which I haven't shown you here. So this is the angiography. You can see that patient has a patent stent, which was done a few weeks ago. And he has got some disease in the osteoproximal LAD. So at this point of time, I'd like to interact with the audience. And could you please you know, give your opinion? How many of you would like to continue medical management without doing any procedure in this particular case? Yeah. For time's sake, I haven't given you the entire angiography, just this to you. This is probably the best view. I don't know why it's not playing. Right. So this is the osteoproximal LED. The first option that don't do anything, just keep on medical management. That's the better option. Okay. Right. Second option, I'll stand the osteoproximal LED without crossover to the left main stem. Just so majority don't agree. Okay. Stand the osteoproximal LED with crossover to the left main stem. Yes, yeah, so you want to cross over. And fourth, I would like to have for more information by doing an IVAS. So there is a group, definitely they want to do an IVAS because they want to have more information about. Uh, this lesion because increasingly now we are agreeing that angiography is probably not enough to deal with all these kind of lesions. Anyway, so if you go back about the literature of the osteal LED disease, it is actually not confined to the LED. It's a continuation of the distal left main to the LED and 90% of this osteal LED disease actually also have left main stem disease. And these are the distribution of the plaques. If you do IVAS in those patients that you can see that osteal LED is actually not osteal LED. There are left main stem involvement as well, which we often don't see in an angiogram. So before considering stenting to the osteal left LED, we need to consider certain points. Do we want to just keep our stent absolutely nailed at the ostium of the LED. Can we do that? That's first thing. Second thing, how safe it is to leave few struts in the left main stem after doing just precise osteal LED stenting. And actually, do we need to cross over into the left main stem? And many a time, as we don't see any disease in the angiography in the left main stem, being an interventional cardiologist, you'd often are quite afraid to put a stent in the left main stem if it looks healthy in an angiogram. So that's our innate kind of inhibition of coming to a left main when we can't see a disease in the left main. And there is another issue is how to deal with the vast difference in the vessel diameter. So left main is five millimeter, your LED is three millimeter or 2.7 five millimeter, whatever, how to deal with this discrepancy of the size if you're crossing over and doing the left main at the same time. And what is the angle of bifurcation? Whether it is a narrow angle or it's a wide angle and what is the distribution of plaque? Is, the, is there any osteal circumflex plaque? Is there any distal left main plaque? 
these kind of things we need to consider. And at last, is angiography enough for the decision making in this kind of lesion? And at the end, if we cross over to the left vein, do we actually need to do the kissing of the circumflex ostium in order to prevent a future circumflex osteal stenosis? So these are the few questions that we need to think about before going for an angioplasty to the osteal left vein. Now, this is a pictorial representation of what we see in an angiography and what is actually the real anatomy. So if you see an angiography, it looks pretty the same. It's you know, just a lesion there, but does it really mean that? So there may be plaque inside, which you may not even see. There are a lot of plaque, which may be extending up to the left vein, which we may not see. So that we have to consider, but we see the same angiogram all the time and we underestimate the plug burden and plug distribution if we are not doing IVAS in these kind of patients. And it is often extremely difficult to precisely stent at the ostium unless and until there is a big, very big left main compared to the LED diameter. And unless and until there's a very little plaque in the distal plot part of the left main, it is very difficult to precisely stent at the ostium. Now, if we are thinking that we are going to stent precisely at the ostium, then we need to find out, is it safe? And can we actually predict? We can do that by doing an IVUS. I'll come to that later. But what are the studies saying about osteal stenting only and versus vis-a-vis -vis if we could cross over and come to the left main stent? Now, it's a small study comparing that only osteal stenting vis-a-vis -vis the crossover stenting. And you can see if you do the crossover stenting, you don't have an IVUS for an example. Not everyone has an IVUS. So if you do a crossover stenting, come up to the left main, your result is much better as far as an AMI is concerned, as far as the stoke concerned, and the target vessel revascularization is concerned, the restenosis is concerned. If you actually do the crossover into the left main, your result is better compared to if you just putting the stent at the ostium and keeping few struts on the left main. Now, as we know, many interventionists in a normal looking angiographic left main, we don't want to come into the left main. Can we predict that if we can put the stent just at the ostium, then you have to do an IVUS. And in the IVUS, if you see near the carina, there is a sharp edge, it's called an eyebrow sign. And if you see that, and in spite of seeing that, if you just play the, place the stent here at the ostium, you are actually going to get a circumflex osteal stenosis in few months or years' time. Though your acute result will be absolutely fine. But if you are seeing this, and in spite of seeing this, you are actually putting the stent just at the ostium of the LED, you are actually inviting a circumflex osteal stenosis in, in due course. But if there is no eyebrow sign, probably you can get away by just placing the stent at the ostium of the LED. And this is the pictorial description. So this is your eyebrow sign. And if you put the stent just at the ostium and you invite a circumflex osteal stenosis. And if you don't have an eyebrow sign, you just precisely put the stent at the ostium of the LED without coming to the left main. You generally get away without producing any circumflex osteal stenosis. So these are the few things that we actually need to do that. In this particular case, I actually performed an IVUS and I wanted to see that what is the area at the osteoproximal LED and also wanted to find out what is the size of the left bend. Now, this is from the distal stent, which was put a few weeks ago after an infarct. And you can see proximal to the uh, you know, stent edge, there is significant disease in the osteoproximal part of the LED. I'll show you the measurements as well. You can see the plaque. This is pretty much tight here. And then you see it is coming near the bifurcation, the circumflex ostium, and then coming to the left main. And you can see in the nine o'clock position, to 12 o'clock position, there is a plaque in the left main as well. So in this particular patient, there is osteoproximal LAD as well as left main disease. So I decided to measure that. And when I measure the osteum of the LAD, 
the measurement came 3.79 MLA. So this is significant less than four. So I decided to stent it. And if you look at the left main, there is 55% plug burden in the left main as well. So I decided to cross over and stent uh, from you know, proximal LED to the left main because the left main was diseased as well. So the rest of the thing was pretty much simple. I just pre-dilated that with a balloon. And then I, this is the post pre-dilatation. And then I stented with a four into 18 Ultimaster Tanse stent. And this is, again, when we choose the stent and we size the stent, the one thing we have to remember because left main is often very big compared to the distal part of the LED where we are actually landing the stent. So how do we size? So if you do an iverse, so the distal part where we actually want to land, you measure the intima to intima diameter and the media to media diameter. For example, if your intima to intima diameter is three and media to media diameter is four, you choose a 3.5 stent if the distal. And then, for example, your left main is five or 5.5, you have to choose a certain type of stent where actually you can post dial it 3.5 stent to 5.5. And this particular stent, the Ultimaster Tanse, which we can be 3.5 stent can be post dilated up to 5.5, at least two millimeter above. So in this case, I choose a four millimeter stent uh, to uh, overlapping the previous stent. And I inflated that. And at the end, I did the pot with a 4.58 millimeter NC balloon. And uh, then that was the final result. So this is the pot and you see the final result, angiographic result. And that's where I finished and I did an uh, IVAS again, post-procedure IVAS. And you can see the uh, post-procedure LED ostium was 8.16 millimeter square. And whereas the left main was pretty much big, 12.71, what I have achieved after doing that. And I didn't do any Father kissing and the circumflex ostium in this particular case. So, in conclusion, osteal LED lesion is often associated with distal limbs, left main stem disease, and nearly about 90% of the osteal LED is associated with left main stem disease as well. IVAS is helpful to decide about the plug distribution, the vessel size, dissemination, and crossover stenting has better outcome compared to the precise osteal stenting attitude, though. In those patients where and those uh, interventionists who are practicing without an IVAS, I, I would recommend if you see an osteal LED lesion, it is better to stay crossover and stent. And I'm not saying that every time you have to come up to the ostium of the left main stem, but you at least have to come uh, do a proper pot in the left main stem. So at least eight millimeters so that you can have an eight millimeter balloon to do a pot inside the left main stem. And while we are choosing, the size of the stent, then we have to be careful that what size we are choosing because there may be often a discrepancy of the left main and the LED. So we have to choose the stent accordingly and to know about the stents, which stent you can go up to which size. So that's all about the tips and tricks of doing a osteal LED lesion. And regarding the uh, circumflex um, kissing, there is no consensus. The generally it is said that if it is a big circumflex, flow is fine, uh, you know, and the patient's age is a little bit advanced. Don't do anything about it. You just leave it like that. But if the younger patient, big territory is supplied, and you think there may be some pinching in the circumflex ostium, you can go back and do a kissing of the circumflex ostium as well. There is no consensus that all the circumflex ostium has to be uh, dilated and kissed in the left main if you do a crossover stenting. But it's 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 your personal decision uh, whether you want to do a kissing of the circumflex ostium as well if you are crossing over. Thank you very much. If you have any question, I will take that.